one final game for the day here at the Xfinity Analysis Desk as we continue things for the Intel Extreme Masters Oakland PUBG Invitational. Game number four on the way here in a moment. And overall, what we've seen so far today is nothing short of spectacular from some of these teams able to position themselves very strongly going into day two. We've seen Method come out strong. We've seen AA come out strong. Tempo Storm as well and the like. DC starting things out in the start of the day. We've seen West Circle, Center Circle, West Circle. Where else are we wanting to see? What, what do we want to see to try and challenge these teams in terms of their decision making and kind of their ability to adapt to a situation? I think the biggest one would be obviously a military ending. If it happens, you have like 19 teams that have to either make it across by boats, by bridges. Mm -hmm. And I think that's going to be very interesting to see. Uh, also, if it's hard on the East Coast, maybe if it ends on like Delta Power Plant or if it just ends on one of the coastal regions and there's like a lot of water involved where, you know, basically half the zone you can't even go into, yeah. I think that would also be interesting. Your thoughts? Definitely the same. I want to see a circle Stalper. Yeah, Stalper. Ending a Stalper. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. <laughs> I love I love Stalper endings. I think it's a really good point that you bring up with the potential of it being military, though, if, if that does come push to shove, because EG is the only team that seems to be going over there. I mean, there's been, a, there's been one or two other drops there, yeah. but as you say, those bridges could be absolute death traps. Everyone would love a boat to be able to maybe go very south of military to those beaches, etc., and things like that. But there's a limited amount of boats. Yeah. You're not going to be able to find that many boats. And when you do, if you want to try and pick up other boats to try and kind of save yourself situations, then that could be problematic as well. Is that oh, fair? Oh, definitely, but still. There are some teams good at really playing out of these situations. You yeah. see, like Triple A and Triple A. You DC, see yeah. the Western Circles. We have two, three Western Circles, and ending in the middle though. But Western Circles, Triple A, they're looting Multa. Yep. they're still able to accelerate into coming last in the last zones and play out of that. I love the fact that you get, especially we saw it online a lot, which is you know players and teams etc. Just establish themselves a strong foothold on certain locations, and I feel it's awesome to see that. Things like North Georgia Pole or very far North Georgia Pole, that's TSM land. And in yep. places like Milter, that's AAA land and stuff like that. So do you think, though, going into the next day, day two, there are going to be teams that want to challenge those positions? Because it gets kind of frantic and frenzious when, when you're so far behind in points and maybe you have to do something a bit desperate. Yeah, like I said uh, a few games back, tomorrow when we see what the standings are, if a team needs that edge or if a team needs, like, let's say I'm in second place and Avenger is in first and I want to take him out That's of the really game, good. I'm going to drop down where I think he's going to go and I'm going to fight him and I'm going to take him out of the game early so he gets basically no points yep. and then, you know, however well I do, I can take the lead and then maybe secure the entire tournament. So tomorrow is when we'll see that. I don't think today, or in this last map, I don't think we're going to see that just yet. Right, yeah, you've got to stick to your game plan, as you were mentioning before Avenger. Oh, definitely, but I think that, I don't think people are going to do ballsy moves, mm -hmm. because we have, even though you do good contra other team, you can still have other teams breathing down your neck, so I think they can sticking to their game plan. Not the first or the second decision they do is, I mean, coming out of Pachinki, yep. you're not going to change that if you have success the first day. Mm -hmm. I think they're going to keep doing that. And I also think, I don't think they're going to drop on what, what like contested teams. I don't think that's going to happen. Looking at the three games that we've seen so far today and then going into the fourth game, who, who are some teams that have stood out to you as, as their play that haven't been able to breach like the very, very top spots? I know there's a lot of teams here. There's been a lot of players. It's hard to keep focus on all the action. But are there any teams to you, say, sub the you know seven or eight mark or anything, even around there, that has been able to impress you in their, in their movement, in their abilities? What do you think? I think that Ninjas and Pajamas, the, in the third game here, they came out from a northwestern side of the circle, and they're doing a wide shot driving in quarry and driving just to the southeastern side of the circle where there's basically no people. They don't know that, but they take a chance. Yeah. And they actually come into the circle without having to fight anybody. And then this next circle hits, and they have to do that again. So they drive really wide again, and they actually end up getting third by driving a lot mm -hmm. and have a really good position. They're really strong mechanical players, but still the position, if the circles don't hit you, you're going to be having a hard time. But I they play out of that. They, they succeed to play, play out of that. I think uh, we saw Noble trying to do what Nip did last game and try to like following. They were probably like 30 seconds behind yep. doing the exact same pathing though. So Noble's one of your guys to uh, kind of look at maybe? Or? I, th I think they are a little bit too slow in their decision making and okay. actually like acting on what they need to do. I think, I guess right now, 
I know I've been talking about them a lot, but EG really has been consistently like top seven. Yeah, no, so, they have. So, you know, moving forward, if they get lucky with the circle, especially if it's like a military ending, yeah. then I think they have the potential to do really well in a game. But, you know, consistent top seven, top eight finishes throughout the tournament, they're going to be in a really safe and secure point. I mean, something that you were highlighting was the fact that Nip was able to take such wide angles in some of those last circles. Twice. Which, yeah, which was very important for them to try and kind of get deep in that run. But something that cr crazy happened up to the top right-hand side after the TSM versus phase fight is that that nip wide angle that they took actually disrupted a lot of TSM for the most part. And that was a massive fight and brawl that went out there. So when you're going to take those wide angles, you could probably expect some fights to occur because people are playing the edges towards that. Is that a fair assessment? Maybe. I mean, okay. they're, going to be, they're going to be seeing people shooting and hearing people shooting, so they're going to drive away from that. But we also saw a lot of, we also saw a lot of people waiting. Okay. And they're, yeah. All right, well, thank you very much, gentlemen. It's time now to head over to our commentary team as game number four is live, the final game of the day for the Intel Extreme Masters Oakland. Yes, thank you very much. The uh, drop's already coming across, and you can see it is a straight watch Primorster Stauber run across the map, which is going to just obviously open everything up. It does mean some long drops are required if FaZe want to continue to try and go that multi power route. Are we going to see AAA switch to their second choice, which is South Georgia Ball? I'm looking at the map right now to see exactly where people are going to start going. I can see Penta heading towards South Georgia Pole right now. I can see two teams heading to Severny as well. It's really going to change things up here. FaZe look like they're going for that long drop, but I don't think they're going to go Milton Power. I think it's going to be more of a run around farm. Well, this is like one of the perfect circles for the last game. For the day, we're going to see a little bit of everything that you could potentially want. Everybody's going to be able to separate out, get some solid loot. Nothing is too far away. We're coming over here right now with Cloud9. As you can see, they've kind of opted into this southwestern corner of the map. They're just trying to get a little bit of loot. They've all kind of separated out, and they're looking for different spots. We can see that a little, uh, three of them are actually over at Primorsk right now. Solid's actually kind of go off in a different direction. Method right now, they're kind of holding down different locations throughout the map. They've kind of separated out. A lot of these teams are opting into a very centralized drop, though. And bring up the map for a second. You can see a lot of people are all kind of around that school, Pachinki area. Everybody's kind of so, like, they're separated just by a couple of buildings, but it's not this like what we were seeing in the game one and game two, everybody really separating out. The only people that are really sticking to that oh. is Tempo Storm. And there's the circle coming in. It's going to be over towards Yasnaya, Lipovka, down to Milta. So ironically, if FaZe and AAA looks like they're headed towards their standard locations, which is down over the way, Milta, uh, are going to be perfect circle. And it does mean that Pentu have gone for that drop up and towards South Georgia, Paul, into the front six and back six by the looks of it. Uh, over towards Noble as well. And the first knock comes in. It is Texas from Crimson knocking Wind and Rain stab. And I did just actually get a chat with Wind and Rain in the, uh, in the break there as well. And just like, oh man, we got pincered. We got pincered between Method and Liquid. It wasn't a fun place to be. Um, so, they, you know, they felt that Method sure, they absolutely deserved it. It is going to be the first kill of the game. And it's coming in very early. But if we go back to the map, obviously we can see these guys are looking for this kill. Uh, we can see the split. You know, Cloud9 are down in Primorse this time. EG, they are heading over to military base, but it's definitely changed up a lot of drops for a lot of teams. And a big part about this is remember the way that the airplane came in. It made it to where that Milta area was not on an easy drop path. Yeah. So a lot of these squads are going to have to get in vehicles and very quickly mobilize back over here. You can see right now it's just going to be corn shuckers that are making their way back down as we immediately jump over with Wookie Bookie caught up in a fight. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's the fight continued. Wookie Bookie was sitting on top of that church for a long time. It, it, they have both dropped into ruins, so it's inevitable. There's, I would say, a sporadic amount of loot there for two squads. Mm -hmm. Certainly, the, the one squad you'd be looking towards maybe going over to Watertown well, as well, but definitely two squads are going to clash. It's starting to become a more popular drop location. You know, people drop down to Sunken City, a whole bunch of different names for Sunken City, call it whatever you will, but also going over to Ruins. Specifically, if you can hit both of them, you can get tons of loot out of that trade-off. But in this case, we've had two different groups drop down right next to each other, and they're trying to figure out how they're going to disengage and get the loot that's necessary. You can see right now, we're on Wookie Bookie, and he doesn't even have any body armor at this point. He doesn't want to get too involved into a fight. Well, Miami Flingos, uh, Flamingos, who've been going into Yasnaya predominantly, they're about to run into Liquid, who are in and around Shelter area. Uh, we've got Corn Shookers, who've gone over towards the side, and they're actually in Milton Power. The phase realize the corn truckers are in their land. I mean, actually, looking at where they are positioned, they're actually behind each other, <laughs> over and behind us. But there's Miami Flamingos, and they do run into Hollywood. Hollywood gets downed 
for Liquid. So Liquid losing players early. They've not had the best of luck so far, Liquid. They've they've been running into teams everywhere they go. Now, speaking of a team that's had a little bit of trouble, that's going to be Penta as we see a down coming out. Terra get, getting some clean shots onto gems there. They've been kind of struggling here recently. They really try have to find their footing. And they thought that coming up into here, maybe kind of contesting this area might be it. But Noble says no. Georgia Pool is our home, and they're and just not going to let anybody aggress it. And that's it. very interesting. Noble starting out. They were obviously over in the hospital area. They've actually pushed up, pushed up to the front six, which is where, obviously, I, I guess, certainly for Penta, they're thinking, okay, we're going to have the back six and front six. That's the what, what I mean by that. If you don't know the terminology, it is the, the red houses, mm -hmm. either side of the apartments in South Georgia Pool. Obviously, they are prime the loot positions. Duplexes, they are, they yeah. are They are clusters like primary loot positions obviously down by the amount of loot that's in there and the distance you have to travel looks like wind and rain they've been very much involved in a lot of fights they're going to take a couple of shots and Drassel Drassel's just going to pass on by interesting luminosity have been dropping into ruins quite regularly this time they obviously opted out of it they've gone more the Gatka route where Tempo Storm are as well uh, over in Miami Flamingos they did move out of Yasnaya very early this time they've been predominantly going into West Yasnaya they've decided to start looking in around the areas they're trying to get as central as possible as soon as this came in and you can see Tempo Storm trying to do the same a lot of teams starting to transition now into looking towards those middle complexes there's some absolute godlike complexes in and around this area right now I can see corn chuckers have already taken one of those high hill positions in there there's a lot of teams position that's why you guys at home, the pro play this game. You're looking at the ti timer in the corner. You still got a minute on the blue. You can carry on looting for ages. This is the first circle. But these teams, it's all about positioning. And you'll see Drassel, who has just taken a lot of shots at the moment. He's got himself a kill. It's going to be Austin that will go down. And he got the knock onto Profi just as he headed over that hill. Ghost Gaming is really another one of those teams that's been trying to find some type of kill, some type of position inside of here. They just keep taking some early losses coming out and even taking a pistol to get the kill on top of <laughs> a it. A pistol whip. You can it. serve your uh, AR rounds. Everybody knows that ARs are extremely strong, so Profi's up over the top side of this. We're actually having quite a few kills coming out in this early game. 74 people still up and active, but what we're starting to see is the teams are starting to feel a little bit more comfortable. You can see that they're playing a little bit more confident. People are starting to get a feel for the map and how to play around these other teams. And they're starting to take some wide open shots from long range. We're right now watching Leighton just lay into a Dacia. You can see it's struggling to get up a hill like, please, just get away from the bullets, please. Dacia's going uphill just feels so bad. I'm looking at Cornshooker's positioning. They've got the what's considered God Complex. Uh, we talked about this with Avenger mm -hmm. before, obviously. Um, there's a couple of complexes that have a decent roof positions, decent, decent lookout positions, but also walled around it. And you can also bring all your vehicles into it. And that's just to the north side of the warehouse area, etc. That's just of north of shelter. So it's they're in that complex, God complex position. They're also actually holding over towards mansion and the other top complex. So they're kind of getting a little greedy right now. Oh. Uh, Wind of the rain have ran unfortunately into a, a, a tricky position. They're basically now pinned in there. Miami Flamingos have them pinned. Alliance also landed some shots on them, so they're getting kind of pinned from both angles. And that's, you know that's not the place they want to be. They've got their vehicle, it's flaming out inside of them. Wind and Rain had to retreat back into the shack. They're just going to try to figure out now how to reposition and get out of here because that's the big problem. Where they're at, sure, they're safe from now, but they're eventually going to have to move. And look at the mini-map around them. There is just squad upon squad that's already kind of posted up with different firing angles upon them. And oh, here we go. Miami Flamingos getting some nice shots onto Ninjas and Pajamas as they drive by. Yeah, they're a team that needs some kills. Uh, both of these, actually. NIP obviously had a decent finish in the last one. And, you know, over, oh. in the, over in the other side of the tournament, they've just reached the grand finals in the Counter-Strike. So they're going to be very happy if they can get a decent finish here as NIP do lose the man there. Borg, actually, the killer was picked up by Crimson, uh, I believe. They're not Crimson, sorry, Corn Shuckers. Zampa in there. Very different tactics actually between these two as we've seen quite a bit of action early on actually inside this. We expected this as we started hitting fourth and fifth games. We're going to start seeing a lot more shooting going on between these. Hayes tries to take down Fausto there from Digital Chaos. There's two different tactics. There's these teams are here that we're looking at that have gone mm -hmm. central very early. But there's TSM, Noble, Penta, Digital Chaos, Ronan, EG. They're all outside the circle and they're all playing the late circle game this time. Oh, yeah, if we can bring up the map, you can see that everybody is so directly centralized right now. Coming back over here with Fausto. Remember, these guys did get win in game one, so they're definitely trying to net some more points off of this. They're coming in the warehouse, which is kind of one of the rougher places to hold down. There are some big, wide-open angles back behind it, so you really have to make sure you watch your flanks. 
So we're going to have to see how that warehouse play comes around there. But everybody right now is so centrally located. There's those outer teams like TSM we've talked about before. Noble's still on the outside. Evil Geniuses, they're still down at military base. But everybody is just really trying to collect in and get as close to center as possible, which is going to be kind of interesting with everybody is centered up. If they have to it's, reposition back out, it's just going to be a bloodbath. I mean, this plane is basically the, the cross from, from Primorsk up to Kameshki has definitely changed the way things happen. AAA have actually worked their way into military and are quite happy looting while this happens. Method, they're still obviously the number one team right now in the tournament. They're still sitting in Pachinki. They're continuing their loot path. Now you can see Miami Flamingos. They're realizing that they're desperately trying to find some ground to find their home. They've been in Yasnai. They left Yasnai so early on and they've still not been able to get the prime position. Two people on this bike. It's very, very dangerous. You're heavily exposed. They're passing by Wind in the Rain there who is sitting there, but I think they're more concerned about basically keeping it alive in that little complex at the moment. You can see they're very much pinned. You can see by their teammate, Tony V. Now, is this a full flank going on? Or are they coming to... I think they're just rejoining the team. Again. Yeah, they just got on the bike. We're trying to get back over there. That's why we saw a nice little set of cover fire that was coming up from there, making sure that they didn't step out from inside that shack. They're still just trying to hold this angle. And this is kind of one of those awkward spots where you know exactly where somebody's at and you can't look away from them. But at the same time, you feel like there's got to be something going on back behind me. I need to check that window. I feel like the camera man thinks the same as you. <laughs> <laughs> you just can't look away from them, despite the fact nothing will ever happen here. But instead, we are looking at the map. And you can see TSM, you know, they've been happy in North Georgia Pole. It has been fairly successful for them. Nobody's really tested them. But these two teams obviously clashed early on. You can see Noble in the distance there, the chosen one running away from that one. Seems he's decided to take a couple of shots on him in that uh, swerving dance. He has some pro driving there as he manages to get the swing on that. These are two teams that need some kills. Penta obviously dropped early on into Georgie South, which is where uh, I guess Noble feel is their home at the moment. Nobody's really challenged them out too much there. They are starting to all creep in. As the second circle comes in, it is going to be very much centralized. And now they have to get moving. EG doing the same. They're down in Milter. Uh, uh, Milter. They're down in military, sorry. They're making their way forward. For me, I'm interested to see how FaZe are going to do. Because FaZe have obviously had very Poor games, I think it's safe to say. Poor first three well, rounds. A couple games. Start, they yeah. this time haven't got milter power. They actually had to get the the sporadic looting in and around the farm area in the south of farm. So they've had to work their way in. Now they've been sitting very quietly in this game. They've just worked their way north and just sat there. They've not really engaged at the moment. Cloud Nine themselves nearby them. Uh, they started out in Primorsk, so they made the way up. And uh, Method actually have left Pachinki and gone south. So rather than actually moving in towards the center, they decided, okay, we're going to play the edge game. And that can be good and can be bad, especially if you look at right now on the map where Ronin was playing up at. They were in the far northern area up around Stalber and Kameshki. And you can kind of play around there and get a lot of free loot because a lot of teams don't like to go up into that area just due to the fact that if you're nowhere near like where the next circle could be Ooh. at. But in this case, it's really oh. playing off from everybody. Now this is where it gets really, really bad. All of these squads that have been playing towards the edge are going to have to push in against that western side of that circle. At this point, you kind of go, okay, do we push down towards Milta? You don't want to drive straight in because you're like, okay, surely there's going to be people post up around there. Keep in mind, inside of this circle, we still have Lumberyard, which takes up so much space on the map. Mm. It's a nice place to play around, but you have to assume if you're a player, you're like 69 people still up and alive. Can't make sure we play around that area. You've got to move around. There's a couple of very good complexes in this situation. I'm just looking at one that's free, and it looks like NIP are going to get there first. It's just to the uh, east side of Mansion, and it looks like NIP are going to oh, get there first. Style in there a little bit, Texas. Oh, he learns it. It's, we all, we've all been there on that track. We know exactly how tricky that thing can be. It's a, it's a death, death in the death beast in itself. Uh, Ronin themselves are coming across, Liquid are coming across. Everybody's trying to get these top complexes now. Crimson, are they going to stay there? Because they kind of have this gold complex that's kind of still in the center. They don't have a gold complex, but it's the, the <laughs> complex that's kind of It is a building complex that is often referred <laughs> to as God. Maybe they do have like, a gold complex, go. I don't know. Hey, they've been playing <laughs> the court well today. today. Yeah, they have a great position, but uh, everybody's kind of creeping their way across. It's Everybody's still in the circle. There is quite a few shots as the transitions come across, as we can pan out and see. Everybody's starting to make the moves now as everybody works their way in. TSM, by the way, way up north, outside the blue. They're gas running it as effectively as you'd like to call it. Way outside. They're actually up in Severny at the moment. They're going past Severny. They're way out of the map at the moment. So they're really and hoping to just outrun the chaos. And we can see right now one of the downsides of that warehouse we were talking about beforehand. There's a squad post, post up right back behind Digital Chaos. They have to make sure they're constantly watching those angles. TSM's finally making a little bit of an approach in. Look at Method on the map. They're actually going out and going all the way around mm. Pachinki. 
And they don't, you can tell that they're like, okay, how are we going to push back inside this? So they're going to circle all the way back up and around. Again, this is, one of, this is one of the early circles, so it's not the worst. We're coming back over here with Crimson. They actually have their vehicle that has been destroyed right next to them. It's got the flaming wreckage. Now they're they going got, to have to figure out how they're going to get out of here. I mean, they have an open field either way. Corn chuckers are like, ha, we have you pinned. But they are in the circle, so they... No reason to move, they just have basically have to watch the flanks and make sure they don't get Plenty of reasons out. to move, but none of them good, <laughs> you can say the least. You know you want to get out of there, but look at this. You can see corn shuckers. Envy's just got a straight line of sight onto them. They can retreat back up that hill, kind of, but that just gives line of sight. But off to the side, Miami, Mifling, uh, Miami Flamingos are right next to them, and you can see Digital Chaos still inside that warehouse as well. This is going to be one of the little hot spots, is different squads might have to reposition back through. And oh no, one of their vehicles is rolling away, one of their potential cover sources. Well, this is, this is the, the god area, the god position, as you can see. They got, it's, a, it's a flat roof building, but it has walls all around it. You can see they've got the vehicles in there. They haven't got all four vehicles in there, but they've got the most of the vehicles in there. They could do with a vehicle just there. Uh, but I guess they were pretty short, because they moved into this position very early on. FaZe have just got themselves positioned just to the west of prison, so they took over that complex there. North of them is NIP, and that, of course, uh, east of them is Cloud9. So this is all happening at the moment towards very much the center of the circle. Cloud9, I would say, are back center at the moment. To follow up what you were talking about, about the god buildings right now, one of the reasons why with these outer walls it's so strong is you can move around and you can position and you can maintain these sight lines. As you can see right now, Paradox, he, if he needs to reposition because he hears like a vehicle's coming in, he has some level of cover to move around and find these different angles. And it makes it really easy to secure this area. <laughs> Meanwhile, if you're T-Bone at this point in Jazzy, you're just kind of like, okay, we're stuck here. There's absolutely nothing they can do. They can potentially maybe separate out and run back. Uh, maybe they don't even have any smokes. You can look down. Uh, if you look off to the side of the mini-map, wow. they That's don't have any type just, of throwables that are equipped. Just can we look at the map? Method have gone... Uh, they, they actually, well, we're, okay, we've got phase, mm -hmm. phase here. They took over this complex. As you can see, they're just holding every angle. This is the first time, by the way, we've reached second circle and phase have got four members alive. So they're, uh, AAA actually taking a lot of shots as they pass EG while we're looking at these guys uh, camping out their position. Um, there's a lot of action going on. I did just see AAA. I think they just lost a member, actually, there. Yeah, we did. We lost Shadow. Shadow went uh -huh. down. Uh, vehicle exploded. So EG just took down Shadow, who've been sat in Milter for a large portion of the time. But if you look towards the north of the map, Method you can see Method, they've there. gone all the way around Pachinki. They went actually past ruins through the Georgie Pole Bridge and all the way around. So God knows how much damage they've taken while running this angle because I guess they really wanted to be north well, of Yasnaya in towards the Stalper area. What they're doing is they're trying to avoid any early casualties. Yeah. Remember, Method did secure a lot of points and are now in first place. So they're trying to slow roll this game. They're definitely playing for the points in the survival game now. So they wanted to take this long route out, stay inside the blue as long as possible, because that just means they don't risk is dying as much. I say that as Andy Pyro almost tips that over, but these guys are great at driving. Shouldn't be too big of a deal. They're going to be coming in right up next to TSM as they make this approach. Also around this Stalver area, there's a lot of little nice dips and crevices that you can play inside of. So we don't really have to see where TSM choose to post up at and where Method choose to make their approach into because circle's collapsing in now. So next 20 or 30 seconds, we're going to see where that circle's at and all these squads are going to potentially have to move. There's still one very good complex available uh, just to the east of NIP that I can see that's uh, got a great hillside and good, good mm -hmm. angle. Um, we'll see whether the circle pulls towards it as we're about to hit the third circle. Let's see where it's going to go. And TSM and to heat up Method right have got themselves positioned just on the edge of it, so they're playing very much a similar game. And that's actually quite clever for Method, obviously, just avoiding it. They have first place, but it is going to fall very much on every team that is in there. There's not a great deal of them they are going to have to move. You can see it is falling on a beautiful, beautiful position. This is a potential for a very good game because this is a very good finishing position. Well, there's a lot of interesting terrain pieces that you can play around. You can still see that prison and the area around it are still up and available. Alliance are going straight into LG. They're going straight in. We can see, obviously, you can see the, the lines are effectively happening. Here's Triple A taking shots at Penta. Penta needs to get themselves a decent finish here. Simsy on the trike will get away from Monkey. Here comes his teammates. They're going to pass on by. Monkey's going to be able to get himself some more shots on towards the Dacia. He's just going to let them pass on by instead because now they have the hill advantage. Penta just got inside the circle. EG are going to be pushing up. So EG are going to be to the east and Triple uh, A to the west of Penta. So they've got to be careful if they set themselves up on this hill, which it looks like they have, judging by the map. Uh, they are going to be in a dangerous position, and that's why they watch EG pass on by. And this is all a point where everybody's going to have to start securing different areas of terrain. While there's plenty of buildings that are available, nobody really wants to make the push for them because they're closer towards the edge. So you're going to see a lot of people trying to play in these little dips and death lanes that kind of play out through side here. See, EG's kind of driving around going, okay, where exactly do we want to play in this? And 
Shack in with this under fire. They're trying to play inside this Wizard Shack, and they're in some trouble now if EG decides to push in on this. Remember, they don't know that there's only two members of Pinta in here, so they're just trying to play this slow. And again, we find a nice set of terrain that they're playing inside of. I really love this spot. Well, Noble have just took down Ghost Gaming. I think they've been wiped off the map, as it were, as Noble pushed in there. EG continuing to try and keep them pinned. And Penta... I mean, this, this, these buildings have a lot of names. Wizard's Tower, Harry Potter... Uh, Everybody calls it You like to call it Sniper, yeah. I believe. Uh, I've called it a Sniper Tower beforehand, because yeah. that seems more thematic. I don't know whenever you say Harry Potter and Wizard Tower, it just kind of imagines people riding around on drones instead of motorcycles. You're not a wizard, Matt. I, <laughs> you got you got to dream and believe. Uh, TSM <laughs> are making their way into the circle area, and actually they're going to get themselves a decent complex. They're coming in from the north side, obviously from up, up Kameshki Way. They've, they took a long route round at North Georgia Pond, all the way around. There's a drop actually heading right towards them. Here they go. Ooh, that's a risky one. Okay, Abe's just like, no, you know what? I'll just port there. Um, actually, Triple A taking shots. It's Tempo Storm. That's an interesting one because that's a battle for uh, a position, really, effectively. Tempo and Triple A, I think, the second and third right now in terms of points there. So a kill going Triple A's way as they have a vision on Luminosity. And they just take a pot shot at Ninja, I think, in the top building there. But we do have Method that is now entering inside the circle. We saw TSM just recently come in and claim the building complex next to it. Method's just going to have a, it looks like a crate that's going to be dropping right next to them, so they're going to end up playing inside of this area. Drumming in over now, and we're seeing, we're uh, against all authority, Shiv. This is definitely one of their better shooters on the squad, and trying to keep an eye out and around them. They're having to be playing inside the terrain at this point, so they're kind of living the tree life, trying to find some nice shots, some nice angles, so that way they can clear out anything that's around them. So, okay, if you've got your teammate and you manage to get an AWM on him, oh, uh, elusive stare, careful, Zampa's there. If you get, you, you get, you obviously get a, big weapon like that, do you mm -hmm. think, okay, let's try and position so we have a, a, a position where, a high ground position where we can fire, or do you just think, okay, just play it normal? I, I think that it depends on the team, but a lot of the teams just opt always into position king. You know, everybody always talks about the looting phases. Oh my god, we've got to get this. A lot of these guys feel like if they can just get an AR, a little bit of armor, and some helmets, they don't care. They'll fight and kill and get whatever loot that they need off of it. They just need to play and <laughs> always hold down the strongest point on it. And we can see that Method did end up claiming that, so now they're going to hop back in their vehicles. It's, it's going to be interesting to see where they choose to go, because they might be the catalyst here. Didn't bother with the MK-14. I don't think it, they keep... Well, he didn't pick it some up. Teams I don't think anyone some, else did. Some people just don't like it. I, I don't like it myself. I know Rich is a big fan of it. We've, I we always had this discussions the in the qualifiers. Yeah. The mini is like my favorite sniper rifle. If I'm going to be in, if I'm going to use it, it's just like a laser pointer. You're just firing now. Speaking of firing stuff out, we can see over here with Pandigo yeah. taking some shots. This could this could be the worst finishing for Tempo Storm so far today. They are uh, Valiant, obviously trying to get in there. They've already lost the, the teammates, so he's really looking for place. Is he going to really just? Ditch it. Oh, the next circle. Oh, hoo -hoo. NIP and FaZe and Cloud9 all in very good positions. It's going to force a lot of movement. Look at the western side of the map. You've got Corn Shookers, you've got Digital Chaos, uh, Miami Flamingos. They all need to make the moves. You've got Triple A. They're already on the way as well. Everybody's starting to make this transition. This is where the 64 alive is going to get whittled down to about 30 in very quick fashion. Valiant desperately trying to dodge. Took the bullets. He's going 100 kilometers an hour, but that vehicle is taking a lot of damage and him himself. He's found the rock. He's going to hide. Oh, he got so close to making it. You can see the safety. He was like, I did it. And then the bullets just fly <laughs> out, take him down. But Tempo Storm has been doing a very quiet job of securing nice positions out here. So really going to interesting to see now we can see corn shuckers holding down this building still. They're going to have to reposition out. This has kind of been their home for a while now. Miami Flamingos taking some damage by Frex off to the side. So we're going to see Miami Flamingos holding down one section. Cloud9 holding down the section just to the north of Corn Shuckers, as we can see from Envy's perspective. But they are going to have to move about 100 meters inside. Yeah, the transitions are really starting to happen. Everybody's making their move. You can see Cloud9, they are in a good position. They're starting to take the pot shots. You can see Corn Shuckers are trying to take shots of them because the blue obviously is not going to be coming for another 40 seconds. They want to get as much clear space as they can as Frolica goes down. That's Triple A. They've just worked their way in towards that circle. They're pushing Cloud9's position. So while Cloud9 are there, we're looking at Corn Shuckers Cloud9 have AAA pushing right up on them, which is why they're losing people. EG, they're coming in the backside of FaZe, so FuzzFace manages to say, no, get away, this is our complex. Noble tried to make their move, they're trying to creep into the circle, and TSM are keeping them at arm's length, but NIP currently have probably the best position, but they have just dropped out, and Method trying to work into that position, and that's why you see Energetic Turtle going nice down. Nice grenade coming up Here's GMT. there. Yeah, GMT's trying to push his way around, it's EG, they're, they're, they're walking into a really hard place, and FaZe, 
They're a team that absolutely need to perform. They need the kills, so this is working well for them. They have to hold down this area right next to them. They can't let evil geniuses push inside here. They're holding down this. They have to retreat back up. You can see they're trying to find these different angles. Jimty is trying to look back over. He knows Ooh. where they're at, but just can't quite seem to find it. There we go. A little bit of damage coming onto Ghoul. Ghoul's just trying to creep around the side there. You can see NIPTSN. They're engaging over towards the north side. Luminosity have actually been forced into prison by Triple A. My God, Digital Chaos have just come straight on top of them as well as we watch Nomi desperately trying to keep himself alive. That vehicle very close to exploding. Let's look at the minimap, please. Can we get the map up? Because we see there's a lot of transitions. Everybody's starting to pile into the circle now. As you can see, wind and rain coming in, Penta coming in. Everything happening in towards that south side. Luminosity actually getting pinched from the top by Alliance as well as they come in. Triple A, they are in trouble. Monkey goes down. They're going to get wiped out as Penta come in. Penta to pick up some kills. It is absolute chaos. Digital chaos themselves. They've got three members down. You can see Jockey's, Jockey's trying to get across, but he's in open. Zappa taking the shots as well. 100 rounds manages to go down outside the zone. Luminosity taking shots, and suddenly the numbers are dropping. 65 at the start of this circle. The next circle comes in. It is right on top of NIP. They are the only ones right now in that circle. We talked about it. Moving late is such a dangerous choice, and so many teams moved late, and they just ran right into a kill box of three teams just lighting up everyone. You can see now, off in the northern section of this, several squads are all collapsing on top of each other. As we can see, that phase is off on the distance. Evil Geniuses is still trying to push inside. We've got firefights happening on multiple different sections of the map right now, but nothing really happening inside the safe zone. Everybody's caught in these small skirmishes, and they're not getting the ability to move. And so the longer they're kind of forced to stay in these firefights to try to stay alive that extra little bit longer, means the fact that it's just going to be so rough to step out. Fuzz face does step around, and a nice vehicle explosion going off there. That finishes off EG. They have gone down, and that opens up. Obviously, FaZe can now make that transition. They can move Fuzz. towards that next circle. Noble, though, themselves uh, are in the way, so they're going to have to try and pass on by there as Chappie tries to finish us off. Gustav there. Gustav will go down. Luminosity actually starts to collect some kills. You know, they got pushed into prison. They've got that, like, little ridge line outside the prison. You can see Moorman here also looking in a decent position for Liquid as Scoom gets knocked by Ronan. Everybody having to start moving. They have that mansion position. They've got to move into the circle. NIP are looking very good right now. That They have the only complex in this circle area, and it's a very good complex. But with 37 people alive, you still have to hold it down. You need sure, a lot of bullets. <laughs> you're going to need a lot of bullets to make sure that nobody comes over there, and especially the fact that there are multiple different vehicle spots. Oh, and here we go. LG actually securing a kill off on that. Nice shots coming up from Ninja. We haven't had a chance to really get in with them too often today. Mm. They've been having a little bit of a rough morning as well today. So really excited to see them actually get up on the board with Ooh, that. They've got to be careful. Penta's staring right at them as they make this move. Ultra's, Ultra's just staring straight at them. Ducks stay over here. This is over at Mansion. You can see Liquid. They're starting to look to make their move out of it. The circle coming in now, and they're going to have to start moving. You can see they have that hill position. Ronan are kind of on the back side of Mansion, so they really have quite a bit of distance to move. First phase and Co. Phase are moving in towards the circle. They're getting themselves up with the vehicles. Penta just waiting. Oh, Ninja's on absolutely nothing. He's going to get knocked by the play zone. Penta didn't even need to take the shots, but unfortunately it means nobody gets the kill for it. And obviously 10 points going lost there as everybody moves in. Liquid moving in, Ronin moving in. Let's get the map up. You can see everybody starting to pile into the position. It is absolutely chaos. FaZe have moved into a great position here. They've got themselves set up. It's fairly exposed, but they have the vehicles. Mexi starting to take a lot of these shots. This is a big round for FaZe as they start to decimate Cloud9 in the distance. See, the Corn Shuckers made a quick move over and play in this terrain. All the firefight was happening next to them. FaZe was distracted in a different angle. Now turns around, and that's going to be a big fight that's going to have to happen between what's going on with FaZe and Corn Shuckers. But just to the north of them, Cloud9 and Liquid are still caught inside this fight. 22 people now alive, but look at the <laughs> spread that's coming out on this. Luminosity having such trouble making it in the circle. First phase continuing to pick off. Aroxe is, by the way, outside in the zone, outside the blue. He's just trying to tank his way through this one medic. He could play spoiler. He's coming right in behind first face right now. He's going to be right on the backside as he comes in towards this tree. Could play absolute massive spoiler on them. Liquid continuing to land the kills as well. Aroxe is the blue, the play zone. Oh, he's going to go down. First face just spins around and takes him out in a quick flick shot. Crunch and NIP. Oh my god, the next circle. It is still on top of NIP. They absolutely have this complex on lockdown, but Luminosity are going to challenge them. They're starting to come in. You can see Draxel and Gypsy going to move in. Crunch is going to have to keep it. They've split. You can see X off the side there. There's Drassel. Nice He's going to get picked off by X. That will get finished off. Nobody's still able to push a position. TSM off to the west side. You've got to the north, Liquid, and to the south, 
West position is phased with still three members alive, but first phase has just been knocked. But it's 14 seconds, 10 seconds now before everybody has to come in. Ninjas in Pajamas are doing a good job of holding down all of their sight lines. You can see that. Trying to make sure that Liquid can't push in. Everybody's kind of forced to kind of come around, on, come in on their push. Well, they have the vehicle position. Oh, some big hits from TSM there. They have to start moving in. You can see FaZe. FaZe are going into NIP. They're going to try and push the complex. It's only MXC, uh, Mexi, and sorry, and uh, the last man. Oh, so he missed it. We missed it. Yemti got took it down. It was actually Liquid that landed the kill as well. Mexi, the last man standing for FaZe. Envy from Cornchuck is he's trying to run the blue as well. He's trying to mend his way through that one. TSM off the side. They have to push him. It's Liquid that are starting to take the shots as they use the smoke grenades to try and cover it. Scoob is going to try and get as much as he can. Team Liquid, they're a team that needs some big finishes here. Envy goes down outside the play zone. Vitz goes down on the play zone. We're down to the last 10. It is NIP, FaZe, TSM, and Liquid still alive as they all move into this complex. This complex, by the way, just on the edge of the play zone as Aim pushes in, takes down Crutch. Scoob replies. He drops TSM down as he manages to land the shot. They've got this little vehicle set up, but still the only people now in the zone is TSM. See, right now, Ninjas in Pajamas, X is kind of looking around, trying to find the right angle onto it. If he had peeked just a little bit more to the right, he might have seen coming, something coming off of that. Does Liquid is off in the distance and trying to make sure that nobody can push through. Does X realize that Mexi is right behind him? Mexi is just outside his house. Look at him. Look, it's, it's tucked in the corner there. Mexi we just, just trying to hide right in that corner. He's just being as ninja as he can right now. <laughs> He's just trying to survive. With 10 people up and active, you want to kind of listen in for all of the shots, get a feel for where everybody's coming through at, so that way you can make some type of approach, specifically if you're the solo man. You really have to sneak in onto this, so that's why he's just kind of playing inside what cover he can find. And in about 23 seconds, he's going to have to step out and just shoot whatever comes his way. Brakes using this rock, and this rock could play dividends for them. We see Crunch go down to a grenade from AIM. TSM picking up the kills. They had a good finish Liquid. in the second game. Liquid's repositioning all of their vehicles right now. They're trying to gather them all up, bring them back inside the circle, and try to make some type of fortification for themselves. They're using the smokes with that. Okay, the blue is on. It's going to move, and it's going to push people in. Nine alive. Who is going to come out on top in game number four, the final of the day? FaZe really need a big win here. They've already got themselves fourth place. Break gets knocked by Gypsies. LG starting to get themselves a little spoiler effectively. Liquid, they just got knocked twice there. They're losing people. X is actually playing a real distance. You can see Mexi, he takes down Chips around the side there. So Chipsy goes down with a double knock though for NIP. It puts Liquid in real dangerous position. The blue moves in, six alive. As I look towards it, the next circle comes in. It's gonna be the tiniest of tiniest circles as Smack tries to get his teammate up. X just off the side there. It is gonna be between the five members as Hayes goes down outside the zone. I really don't know who can come out on top in this one. Everybody's just kind of dancing around Everybody's these little damaged. yellow buildings. Everybody's taking some form of damage. NPR looks like he's trying to get a little bit of health back up. Yep, so he's going to get up in health. Now X has been kind of playing inside of all of these buildings and been moving really, really solidly. Ooh. And Smack securing a nice kill on that. Now we are down to four. Scoom taking damage as well just outside. And it's X actually looking towards him. Smack picks around. He oh. gets himself the finish. That's Liquid down. It's TSM versus it's Nip. It's X versus two members of TSM. Can he do it in a 1v2? And right? I think that X gets a feeling that it's all onto him at this point. He's trying to play the different angles and he's stepping out. So with that, TSM does secure first place inside that round. They net themselves 10 kills, all things considered. Coming in in second, we've got NIP with X coming with three kills. Yeah, and uh, 10 kills for FaZe, actually. So uh, much needed points for them. They were obviously not having the best of luck for them. Uh, overall, you know, 265 points is a much needed position. They were in 10th at the start of this, so it's definitely moved them into the, the top half. Big points for NIP, and you can see those guys you know, they were, in the, they were in a great position early on. They got themselves positioned in towards that complex and stayed there for a long time, but they had to fight for it. It wasn't like, it wasn't easy for them, but TSM, great positioning. Remember, they started North Georgie, they went all the way around. They went right yeah. up to Stalba and down into it. They played the late Chaos game. We talked about it before when they had that Cloud9 second place finish. This time, they've gone one better. They've got that first place finish. And I have to say, I was extremely impressed with X pathing inside of those last couple of circles. He managed to move from building to building and secure a kill here or there, just the necessary path to get him inside there and secure Ninjas in Pajamas second place. They were in a really rough spot with all of those squads pushing in. It was pretty much as on X back to try to push inside there. But again, TSM just doing such a good job on securing so many different angles and 
as you're saying right now, Luminosity Gaming doing a good job of making their way inside of here and finally getting themselves a fifth place finish. Yeah, the best finishes so far for Liquid Phase and Luminosity. They've all mm -hmm. had those, they've all had a, a tough day, I think. This is going to be definitely a morale booster for them, obviously. When you start falling four, five hundred points behind, you realize you need a really big finish set going into game two. This has just put them all back on the board and really leveled things out a little bit. Obviously, we were looking towards the, the top of the tables with Method. You can see they're not in the top ten this time around. You know, they tried to do a similar route to TSM. Mm -hmm. It didn't work out for them. They actually ran into NIP, I believe, and that's where NIP started picking up a lot of those kills. But very interesting finish, I think it's safe to say. I, I was happy when I saw the area that was going to push it because you knew it was going to be a, a firefight between everyone. Oh, yeah. Which is why you don't see like a 17 kill finish by one team. It's good because it's very much spread. Look at the kills. You know, it's, it's spread. It's like almost every team's got 10 to 5 kills between them. And so with this, guys, we saw some great performances coming out from TSM securing first place. So with this, we're going to go ahead and throw it over to an interview with Smack to break down what he saw inside that game. Thank you very much indeed, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Xfinity post-match interview. Guys, give it up for TSM! <laughs> Smack, you guys really needed that. Obviously, a couple of rough games, especially game number one. That was a very rough game. First of all, let's get a general feel. How are you and the team feeling after that win? Uh, we're loving it. We're so excited to be here. I'm super proud of the guys. They're playing out of their mind, and uh, it's just awesome. Okay, so let's talk about general how TSM plays. You're a more a slower team. You always kind of come a little bit late game. You do get a bit of a meme and a few comments now and again. You like to kind of loot outside there in the blue. But I tell you what, it's been paying off. We've seen in some of the tournaments you guys have been playing, you've been getting some high rankings, you've been getting better and better. Does this kind of come down to this boot camp that you guys have been doing? Uh, I've talked about it before and I absolutely think so. We have, there are other teams like it. Uh, we have two NA players and two EU players and since we're streamers as well, it's kind of tough to be on the same page a lot. We can't talk strategy and, and things on stream, right? So uh, this boot camp was a big step forward for us, talking over things that we really needed to uh, discuss and uh, really get on the same page. It was good. I mean, you guys have been doing this for years now, right? You've, you've been back in the day with the Armour. We've seen you playing many games, streaming many different stuff. Obviously, EU, NA difference. Does that kind of become a little bit of a problem when practice comes into play? I mean, a little bit, you know, connection can have uh, a bit to play, but more than that, it's uh, schedule. You know, we can't play in a lot of NA events because these guys will be playing and the EU guys will be playing in insane hours. So we play a lot of EU events and we just push through it and, you know, hope for the best. Okay, we're about to wrap this up, but obviously TSM, it must be, to wear this logo on your shirt, I mean, does it add any pressure or does it really just make you proud and want to do the audience proud? I mean, yeah, absolutely. From day one, uh, it was kind of a thing for me. Do I deserve to be on TSM? Like, it was really scary, honestly, at first. And uh, for us, we just wanted to work hard to uh, make everybody proud, make TSM proud, make all the fans proud. I think I speak for everyone in this audience when I say you guys do definitely deserve to be on this team, okay? So for all the people in the crowd, anyone at home that's watching you, anyone that supported you guys, what do you have to say to them? Love you guys. Thank you for all the support. You guys are the best.